Hey guys, I'm Dr. Katz. I'm a cardiology fellow or a cardiologist in training. And something that I see quite frequently in the hospital are people who have heart attacks. In this video, I'm hoping to focus on two specific medications. The class of medications are antiplatelet drugs. And those are medications that are extremely important, especially in the first year after people have a heart attack and have a stent placed in their coronary arteries or the arteries that specifically supply the heart itself and arteries that we open up when you're having a heart attack. So in this video, I'm hoping to allow patients to better understand antiplatelet drugs, the reason why we prescribe them and the importance of taking them. So what happens when you have a heart attack? In order to understand that, I'm gonna take a step back and describe the process of atherosclerosis or the buildup of plaque within the arteries of the body itself. Over years, atherosclerosis can build up inside the artery walls and cause narrowing of the arteries. Atherosclerosis is normally composed of fat, cholesterol, and calcium. And over years, it can become prone to rupture and become unstable. When that plaque ruptures, it kind of exposes the underlying endothelium or the lining of the artery wall itself to your bloodstream and to platelets. The normal job of platelets are to stop you from bleeding. If you have a paper cut on your hand, platelets are some of the first things that activate and cause a small clot to form in a normal manner. However, in a, a heart attack, this abnormal process is happening because of a plaque rupture and platelet activation that causes a clot to form inside the arteries of the heart itself. So you're having a heart attack, what do we do about it? Often the first thing that we do to truly diagnose and treat it is a heart catheterization, specifically a left heart catheterization. This is the process of taking a small catheter or a very small tube and we thread it typically from the radial artery in the wrist or in the groin and we puncture the artery, gain access to it, thread a catheter or this tube up to the uh, aorta and we go to the two arteries that are the first ones to come off of the aorta, and those are the coronary arteries. Again, those are the arteries that supply the heart itself. We use a contrast dye that we inject into the coronaries, and using fluoroscopy or x-rays, we are able to examine the arteries of the heart itself in real time. So this is a video of a coronary angiography where you can see right in that circle there looks like an area that's stenotic and probably the cause of a heart attack in the right coronary artery and distal to it you can probably try to tell in the after pictures that it's not getting a lot of distal flow this is a balloon angiography where we just open up that stenotic area with a balloon and this is the beautiful picture after they leave a stent in and open up that area and if you can tell in that picture in that circle that's actually the mesh wire of the stent that we leave behind what's fascinating to me about those three short clips is that it shows the summary of decades of technological breakthroughs within the realm of cardiology and the treatment of acute heart attacks. Additionally, by understanding how the technology advanced and the issues that we encountered with first balloon angiography, then bare metal stents, and finally drug eluting stents, we can understand why it's so important to take dual antiplatelet therapy. So with balloon angiography, we would open up the artery, but the issue was that the arterial wall would contract due to elastic recoil, due to the basic physics of the human body. And that would cause the artery to now maybe even be even more narrow than before. The next major technological breakthrough in interventional cardiology was the development of bare metal stents. These were metal stents that were deployable inside the coronary arteries that were like little mesh cages that prevented this elastic recoil of the arteries from happening. So it kept the arteries from narrowing immediately after balloon angiography. But neointimal hyperplasia is what we found was kind of a long-term issue. And neointimal hyperplasia is the proliferation of smooth muscles inside of the artery wall itself that would overgrow the bare metal stent. It would end up making the artery even more narrow than before. So drug eluting stents were created in order to prevent this neointimal hyperplasia from occurring inside of the artery wall itself. A different process occurs in the area that's exposed to the bloodstream. That's called endothelialization. 
and drug-eluting stents fixed one problem, the long-term restenosis, but it also caused another, where it exposed the struts of the metal of the stent itself to the bloodstream, and this increased the risk even more of in-stent thrombosis or clots from forming. And that's really the end-all be-all of why we give dual antiplatelet therapy. Dual antiplatelet therapy is composed of aspirin and one of the following other drugs, Plavix or clopidogrel, Brolinta or Tacagrelor, and Effient or Prazogrel. Medications like aspirin, Plavix, and Effient are all once a day, and Brolinta is twice a day. So be sure to take it as directed. Often when drugs are given twice a day, it's simply because they don't last in the system long enough for you to be only taking one pill. So if you have questions about how frequently or when you should be taking your medication, please ask your doctor. Now I know that after you have a heart attack, you're often started on a lot of new medications. And the good thing that I can reassure you about dual antiplatelet therapy is that you won't be on both of these drugs forever. Often, you'll be on both of the dual antiplatelet drugs, aspirin and one of those other medications I listed before, for only the first year. After that, we discontinue one of those drugs and we continue you on aspirin for the rest of your life. Every patient's different, and this is the general guideline that we follow. Your doctor might come up with a different plan, but overall, the reason why we might change that is because we always have to weigh the risks and benefits of any medication. The benefit of taking dual antiplatelet therapy for the entire year, and sometimes after that one year, is that it increases the chance that that stent stays open. But we have to weigh that with the fact that being on dual antiplatelet therapy is going to increase your risk of bleeding. And that leads me to the most common side effects that's seen with these drugs. Most commonly, you're gonna bleed. These are often nuisance bleeds though, and the reason why I call them nuisance bleeds is that they're not life-threatening. The most common bleeds that happen on dual antiplatelet therapy are gonna be nosebleeds, sometimes GI bleeds. So be prepared that if you do get a nosebleed, it might take a little bit longer for you to stop bleeding. Likewise, if you cut yourself, you're gonna to have to apply pressure a little bit longer. And be aware that if you notice dark tarry stools or bright red blood in the toilet bowl, let your doctor know. We want to hear if you're having GI side effects or maybe bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract. It might not be something serious, but it's worth looking into and making sure it's not. Additionally, I can't push this enough to never stop taking these medications without talking to your cardiologist, even if you're bleeding because commonly, the type of bleed that you're gonna have is not life-threatening. So stopping your dual antiplatelet therapy is only gonna achieve one thing, and that's increasing your risk of instant thrombosis, having a recurrent heart attack, and increasing your risk of death. So I think I belabored this point enough, but to again reiterate, you should never stop taking dual antiplatelet therapy unless you're told so by your cardiologist. And the last point I'll make is that after you have a stent placed or if you have a heart attack, you should really avoid any and all other NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are medications like Advil or Motrin. So if you're ever having some minor aches and pains or a headache and you need something over the counter, I would opt for Tylenol first. So I hope this video helped you better understand dual antiplatelet therapy and why you're on these medications and why you should not stop them until you talk to your cardiologist. On top of that, now, if your family ever asks you why you're taking these medications, just send them this video and have your doctor explain it to them.